guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. How are you doing? Where am I? Over there? Yes. Hi, gentlemen. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? <laughs> well, Jerry Seinfeld, thank you so much for taking the time. My pleasure to be here. Is it okay to call you the legendary no, Jerry Seinfeld? No, you don't like that when they say that? that? Eh. Uh, that's, uh, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, I like to try and be uh, regular. Regular. So we, yeah. can call, we can be on first name basis. Yeah. Donna, Donna and, Jerry. and Jerry, yeah. Right, that's a good start. עם כל הכבוד לצניעות שלו, הוא ואנחנו יודעים במי מדובר, המלך הבלתי מעורער של הקומדיה האמריקנית. No soup for you! מי שחתום על אחת מסדרות הטלוויזיה המצליחות אי פעם. What about you, Smoopy? How about a little tuna? You want a little tuna fishy? האיש שהמציא את ז'אנר אומנות הבדיחות על כלום ושום דבר, והצליח לעשות מזה מאות מיליונים. You want you to do a TV show? הרי לא משנה מתי נולדתם, אמרנו ג'רי סיינפלד. ומיד לכל אחד מאיתנו יש את הרגע ההוא שקופץ מיד לראש. Very happy to be taking my family to Israel for the very first time. Wow, they're going to come with you? Yeah, they're coming with me and uh, I'm really excited. What are you going to show them? What is on your list? Oh, the, you, all the usual stuff. They haven't seen anything. You know, Masada and the Dead Sea and uh, Jerusalem and everything. Uh, you were there actually when you were 15 for the first time. Yes, yes. There is a rumor that you were on a kibbutz. I was. You were working in, in the cow shed in the kibbutz? Uh, I didn't do that okay. job. I was in the kitchen and I was uh, cutting banana leaves. Kibbutz Sa'ar, near Nahariya. Yeah. What got you there in the first place? How did you think of There was a deal through the temple when I was a kid. My parents, it was $866 for eight weeks in Israel, including round-trip airfare. For $800. Yeah. So, but you had to work. But I, I didn't have to work. I had never worked in my life, so, so I couldn't do the work. You didn't do, what, you just stood in the kitchen and didn't work? No, I didn't. And they I didn't... actually left. I, I started, I went touring around the country. עוד נחזור לנקודה הישראלית בהיסטוריה של ג'רי סיינפלד וגם לגילוי מאוד מפתיע בהקשר הזה. אבל בינתיים התברר שלמרות ההצלחה האדירה, גם בגיל 63 הוא לא מתרפק על העבר וממרומי האולימפוס לא מפסיק להופיע כמעט מדי ערב על איזו במה. Bad finger. This is a good finger, right? <laughs> I always try and remember, if I get this finger, I'm only one finger away from a compliment, so... מאולמות ענק מפוצצים ועד למאורות סטנדאפ במנהטן שם התחיל לפני יותר מ-40 שנה, העיקר לעמוד מול קהל ולהצחיק. You said that um, you usually need something to irritate you. That starts a joke. Yes. So what's irritating you now? Um... <laughs> I think I when the airlines was... say that they're pre-boarding the plane, I want to say, how exactly can you board before you board? <laughs> how would you do that? And is there a joke you're working on now? I know you really work hard on your jokes. Yes, like I love to play with, with them. Is it, can you try something on me? So what is the latest uh, peace initiative? No, they're working on it. Trump's working on it. Right. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> so you, can you try a joke that you're working on for the Israeli crowd on me that you're not sure about? I'll, I I'll just here. did. That was that? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they'll laugh. What about politics and, and things that are going on now in the it's States? I mean, really you have my, a lot on your plate here. It's not really here. my w world. I, uh, uh, comedians talk about the things that make them laugh, and politics uh, is not really my uh, world of comedy. It's not irritating you what's happening? Yeah, here? it irritates me, but for some reason I don't think of jokes. You said that Trump was God's gift to comedians. Yes. Not me, unfortunately. But most of the other ones seem to be doing very well. And after a year of him in office, would you still say that? Is it still just funny? No, now it's kind of so bizarre and we can't, you can't tell what's real. So I think it's getting harder to make jokes. Okay. כן, זה הכי רחוק שתשמעו ממנו על אקטואליה, פוליטיקה, גסיות ולצורך העניין גם סקס. ג'רי סיינפלד מעולם לא נדרש להגיע למחוזות האלה כדי להצחיק. 
והפעם הכמעט יחידה שהתעסק עם הבית הלבן, הוא עשה את זה כמו שרק הוא יכול להרשות לעצמו. I mean, are you asking yourself how, how come all it's of this is coming? It's not the industry, honey. It's the whole gender. It's men and women. You this is call, about men and women. You just call me honey. Yeah. <laughs> Because you got to get with this. It's not show business. This is global. Did you see any of it? Because everyone's saying it was all around and everyone knew about it, but then... Well, well which show, who are we talking about? Just things that were going on around in studios and no, networks. No, honestly, I've never seen in... Uh, during the years when I worked on my show, and even in the nightclubs. I mean, a lot of uh, the comedians, uh, there was a lot of uh, activity, let's call it, frivolity. Uh, comedians and waitresses and everybody. I mean, men and women, you know, chase after each other, right? Right? Yes. Yes, they do. Now, I've never seen it done in a way that was, uh, that I thought that's not right, so you're what that guy's you, doing. So you're surprised with all this Me Too uh, campaign and things that are coming out now? No, I'm not surprised, but you asked me if I'd seen it. Okay. So I, I, I haven't. One of them is also actually um, your friend or someone you worked with, Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. That's you, terrible. I mean, these behaviors themselves don't even make sense sexually. It's like... I don't even understand why they would do that. And is it something that would cause you not to listen to him anymore, not to be, I mean, not to, to listen to his material, think it's right that they took him well, off Well, he air? stopped. He yeah. stopped working. The problem for him will be no one will ever, ever look at him without thinking about that. And he knows that. I don't understand the, uh, um, the syndrome. Harvey, the showering. What fun is it to shower for somebody? I don't even <laughs> understand it. Who wants to watch anybody shower? Where's the excitement of that? Only if it's on a movie set, yeah. It's a whole world of sexuality that's kind of caught people by surprise. It's like, you're doing what? This is a horrible story. It's not even a good story. תסמכו עליו שהוא יודע מה עובד, ולא שזה בא לו בקלות. סיינפלד נחשב לאחד הקומיקאים החרוצים בתחום. יש כאלה שקוראים לו מדען של הומור, כזה שיושב ימים אם לא שבועות וחודשים כדי לשייף את הפאנץ' עד למילימטר, וגם אז תתפלאו, זה לא תמיד מצליח. pony rides that parents take kids on pony rides and there's nothing else that they could use ponies for except for rides for little kids that cops don't use them for crowd control this bit worked pretty good it's very hard to make an audience laugh you don't say I think I'll do this or I think I'll do that you do whatever you can that that they will laugh at when was the last time you got silence you got, went on stage and you got silence the whole show silence? no just no. Uh, no not the whole show it's this is well, jerry seinfeld okay look yeah. i have respect <laughs> uh, sometimes when you try something new it, it doesn't work it still does oh sure most of the time most, you get silence you say a joke and there's yes, silence silence yes most of the time and work. what happens when you get that silence nothing you just go on yeah well what am i going to do leave <laughs> <laughs> well, they're nobody. What about me? What about you? Why right them? Why not me? Why not you? I'm just as good as them. Better. <laughs> you really think so? No. <laughs> Let's talk about Seinfeld. Okay. Did you know then that it would be so... Oh, no, no. That it would live on? No, never knew that. Well, we were lucky to be on TV at a certain moment when TV was what people did at night. You know, when I ended my show, that's just when the Internet really caught on. It's late. I really should go. I, uh, I don't blame you, Winona. I... Hey, uh, who, uh, hey, uh, who, uh, 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 u
could you have done Seinfeld today in oh, the sure. PC era? Well, yeah, everything's yeah, to be yeah. politically correct. All, oh, the, yeah, you know, all the episodes about the Native Indians. Just and the another gays. map to go through and find the funny things. We, we, a, a comedian, I'm still doing comedy. But I see today that when people say jokes today, they're like checking if they can go there. I mean, if it's like... That's the fun of it. That's what makes it exciting to go see a comedian. There's rape jokes, there's Holocaust jokes, there's Me Too jokes. You just have to make them it's and not make them change. work. It's yeah. just going to be harder, maybe. It's always hard. It doesn't matter. You're trying to get air to come rushing out of a person's body with tremendous uh, explosion and joy. So it's hard to do that. Do you make your friends laugh when you're uh, socializing? Not so much? Not so much. Why, why not? It's difficult. It's difficult. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but I like to laugh. I like to laugh. Yes, everyone loves to laugh. That's why I'm always doing it. It's not work to me. It's, uh, it's just uh, a great way to live. So you want to keep going? Oh, I'll never stop. You as long as I can stand up physically and as long as I'm healthy enough to do it, I'll, I'll always do it. Biggest step, uh, I think, in relationships is you decide to have a kid. Uh, I think you get to a point where everybody you know is pretty much caught on to you. You need to create a new person that doesn't know anything about you. You need a relationship where someone's impressed, you know where the spoons are. By the way, you said you mentioned your family. Um, are your kids a good audience? I mean, do you try your jokes on the kids? Uh, it's different. No, I make them laugh in a different way. So you're a funny guy at home? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, which, you know, the wife doesn't like so much because she's trying to get things accomplished. Oh, so she's trying to discipline them and you're yes. the, the go-to dad that allows everything? Yes. You're that yeah. kind of dad? Yeah, oh, yeah. My God. well, I don't allow it. I have to deal with that at home also. It's yes, funny. a lot of wives uh, have this difficulty. So if they don't want to go to school, they go to you? Yeah, and I say, let's get candy. Let's go to the candy <laughs> store, we'll get candy, and you stay home and play video games. And they do? They take advantage of that? Yeah, no, they laugh. They know that's a joke. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about your trip to Israel. Okay. Are you working on something special for the show in Israel? No. No? <laughs> not, not at all. <laughs> no special no, trip for No, uh, me being there is special. That's true. Me coming that's to Israel event. is special for me. It's special for them. Israelis, uh, everything you ask them, you know, is either, it's no problem. It's no problem. Or, no, it's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. There's nothing in between. No problem. No, no problem. What if we wanted to go in the afternoon? It's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah, the different kind of Jews in Israel. They're, they're not American New York Jews. They're not so, I don't think they're as whiny. I don't think they're as uh, um, irritated as, as the New York Jew. It's a different, a different breed. Same dog, but a different breed. <laughs> כן, זה הזמן לחזור לנקודה הישראלית, לא רק כדי לספר לכם שסיינפלד חוזר אלינו לסיבוב הפרעות שני בתוך שנתיים, התברר שמתחת לרדאר חמקה לה הידיעה שיש לנו בכלל מניות יסוד בסיפור הזה של ג'רי סיינפלד. ובמילים אחרות, מי יודע איך היה נראה עולם הקומדיה אלמלא אותו דיל משתלם ששלח את הנער המתבגר היהודי להתחשל תחת השמש הישראלית הקופחת אי שם בקיץ 1970. Actually, my very first thoughts of being a comedian were in Israel when I was 15 and I was working at that kibbutz and there was a, a, a couple of other kids there from New York, actually from Queens, and we were doing lots of comedy things, you know, hanging around. And one of the uh, kids said, you know, being a comedian is like the greatest thing you could be. And I think that was the first time I heard that. And I thought that, well, gee, how would you go about that? How could you be that? I'm trying to picture it. You're standing in the kitchen. Yeah. The I didn't keyboard. work in the kitchen that much. Okay, you're standing in the kitchen. More in the fields with the banana leaves. So you're standing Do in they the... still have a lot of banana sure, plants? Up there, yeah. yeah. So you're standing in the field with the banana leaves. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the notion that you're going to be a comedian happens right there. Wow. Yeah. You just got the Israeli crowd. You know, you couldn't have done it better. They're so yeah. happy now because they know that si the, the Seinfeld was rooted in a kibbutz. You know? Yes. It's the best story ever. My comedy career, honestly, <laughs> really began at Kibbutz Sa'ar. You're not making this up, no, so I'll be no, happy. No, I'm not. I'm wow. not. I have to say, it was fun to be in Israel when I was 15. It really was. <laughs>
And, you know, I was hitchhiking around the country with a backpack. And I don't even think I had any money. Maybe like $50 or $100. And I would, and other kids, and we would just go, and we would go find other kids, and we would sleep in their kibbutz, and we didn't do any work. And uh, I ate halava and falafel. <laughs> and it was really a fantastic summer, the summer of 1970. Wow, so now you're coming back in the winter yeah. of uh, 2017. Yeah. So it's great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank and you. we're looking forward to see you in Israel. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you.